Hello folks, I, uh, I'm coming to you live from uh, the spot that I walk to every day. Um, I just made a, a rant video and I deleted it. I was like, you know what, that sounds pretty crazy. Maybe I should just delete that. So anyway, uh, so you might be wondering, who, the, who is this guy? What, what, what's up with his face? Why is he drinking unsweet tea? Not, not just unsweet tea. I don't know what's going on with this guy. So I'm Dustin Smith. I'm uh, the owner of Star City Savages RPGs. They're located in Roanoke, Virginia. Um, and for the past couple of months, I've been at home and I've been working on a, a setting called the Drowned War. How it functions is that it, it's it's at this point with a core book I had to trim out multiple settings that will be um, available later on but right now it's a single set it's three settings uh, it takes place in the Lost Sea uh, after an event called the Anthropocene which is the flooding of the world and you have um, you have the Junk Flotilla Refuse, which anybody that picked up the Jumpstart is... I'll, I'll post a link to it. Um, anybody that's familiar with the Jumpstart kind of gets the idea because it takes place in Refuse. And everybody's like, well, isn't this Waterworld? And I'm like, well, yeah, kind of, not quite. It's not Waterworld, it's, it's just if the world was flooded. That's kind of how it is. The people take the junk that floats to the surface and they all sort of merge it together into a single um, sort of flotilla or a junk flotilla. And then you have like the ruins of a city and we just refer to that as the city because people forgot which city it is. They don't know. There's all kinds of landmarks from all over. It's almost like it's every city combined. Um, people go into the city to try and dig through the salvage and sometimes you get lost so there really is a horror element combined with the exploration now you also have uh, flotilla oceania and flotilla pacifica on flotilla oceania the year is 1934 the year is always 1934 according to the department of information so you have sort of this diesel punk kind of noir era world and you have to be mindful of acknowledging that it's not the year that they tell you it is. And they tell you it's 1934 every year. Um, books are illegal. So even though they tell you it's a certain year, they have technology that's jazzed up in like the Art Deco style, but it's really advanced. They have a data network. They have like nuclear energy. They have all that. It's just designed to look like it should be in the year 1934. Uh, alcohol is illegal too. You can't have a drink. So it plays off the issues of prohibition. It, it's... I wanted it to have sort of um, a Call of Cthulhu vibe and still maintain a lot of the sci-fi aspects of it. The, the idea that outside of Flotilla Oceania is a destroyed world, it's, it's destroyed, but also that you're almost tempted to leave it. Like there are people that leave Flotilla Oceania to go and live in refuse because they feel safer living out in the wild than they do in a civilization that's so structured. So if you... Um, if you like that, if you like the sort of noir mystery era, if you like the the political intrigue and the danger of that, I think you'll like playing in Flotilla Oceania. Flotilla Pacifica is a little bit closer to your 90s era comic books. I love 90 eras comic books. You know, the, the bright colors, the, uh, hey Shane, the, um, the bright colors, the, the sort of crazy action, 
and, and I mean, you know, a lot of like the movies and such that we're watching now, I read the comic books of when they first came out. So with Flotilla Pacifica, whereas, you know, Flotilla Oceania would be more akin to 1984, Flotilla Pacifica is a lot closer to Brave New World because everything in Flotilla Pacifica is controlled by the media. Um, the media, the Distance Studios, or Distance Q Studios, depending on what you want to call them, have, they're the, they're the powerhouse. They've, they've cornered the market. They lock down everything. They own it all. And they decide who's going to be a celebrity superhero, and they decide who is going to be on the naughty list. So you can play as a superhero. In, if you want to watch, if you want to play, go to Flotilla Oceania, you'll be able to play as a superhero, well, maybe as an anti-hero, depending on how you want to spin it. There are sanctioned Flotilla, sanctioned superhero teams, and they have really, they have Paragon superheroes there that are good heroes. But then they also have some characters that are publicly, they look like good exemplary heroes, but they're like celebrities, like superheroes become your celebrities in there. And then you get some people that are like mutants, they're like, they have, they have the power, but they don't have the ambition, so we call them super slackers. And in this kind of world, in this three-setting paradigm, you have the ability to just play in, in any of that. It, it combines some of my favorites. It combines post-apocalypse, it combines like your noir and your mystery, and it also combines like your flash and bang supers. And I like the idea of finding a way to have superheroes in a almost Call of Cthulhu-esque setting or have like noir detectives in 90s LA. And then of course, you know, then you have like the, the cosmic issue that is the city and refuse. So I hope that when we get the Kickstarter going, I've already, I've already written the book. It's just a matter of editing and art. And some of the art that I've got is pretty amazing. I hope that when I get it all set, I hope that I can depend on you, you know, people watching this, the people that are interested, to, to back it, you know? And obviously, like, we don't just end there. I have multiple flotillas that come into play once I get the core book out. You know, Arboretum, Post-Apocalyptic Fantasy, Daedalus, Cyberpunk, Labori, Mech, Kaiju. I've got multiple multiple flotillas uh, everything gets put in there and they're even referenced in the core book but I don't have the space or the funds to put them all in there now when it comes time please back the Kickstarter please purchase my products so that I can expand on this so that I can take some new creators some people that are really interested in writing, in expressing themselves, and showing what they can do with a story in this world. I've already hired people to write, I've already hired people to, to be artists, you know? And I'm giving that chance to people that I come across, so I'll keep you informed. But right now, you know, go check out the Jumpstart, you know? pick it up, play around with it, and uh, later on I'm going to post some videos of like live play and just mechanics to talk about how things go out in the world. So I appreciate your time. Thank you for watching. Again, Dustin Smith, Star City Savages RPG, and uh, hope to be seeing from me in the future. Have a good day.